Hey, how's it going guys? So today as promised, we're gonna try to take off this cylinder head off this 2009 Pontiac G3 with a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine. As you may remember, we did a compression test and a leak down test on these cylinders and it was evident that air could get into your cooling system. Therefore, we suspect the cylinder to have a bad head gasket. That's why we're gonna remove it. Now, I've already removed the spark plugs and the ignition coils. And in order to do that, all we had to do was to pop this cover loose like this. And then here's a look at the connector for our ignition coils. Just press down on this, pull this out. And then our ignition coils were held in by these two bolts that are gonna require a T40 torque socket. And then all it takes is some wiggling and your ignition coils should come out. And next we'll remove our battery terminal connectors. First the negative for the ground side and then the positive side. There we go. And next I'm actually gonna remove this battery to make more room here. On yours uh, there's gonna be a bracket that's holding this in. Removing that should be pretty easy. Probably just two bolts on the sides. But it's uh, missing on ours so we're just gonna yank this out of here. By the way, if you see any tools that I'm using on this job that you might be interested in, like these guys, I'll put a link to them in the description box down below. All right, next I'm gonna remove our air filter box with this uh, mass sensor and this air tube still attached. So we're gonna basically remove it from down there. If you wanna do that, you need to unscrew that little uh, bolt that's for a clamp that attaches this air hose to our throttle body. Use a screwdriver or a six millimeter socket with an extension like I'm doing here. Should be plenty loose. All right, next we need to remove this filter housing and this guy is held in by three bolts that I can see as of right now. One 10 millimeter bolt down there and then there are two 10 millimeter bolts back here. And then we should be able to pull this out of here. So we're just gonna lift up on this end and twist this so it breaks from the throttle body and then pull and it should come out. All right, next we're gonna raise and support the front of the car on jack stands. Just make sure your emergency parking brakes are on and also your car is in gear if it's a manual. And next, in order to get to our timing belt, timing belt covers and all that good stuff, we're gonna have to remove our right front wheel. You don't really have to remove the driver's side wheel, nor even do you have to raise the driver's side, but I'm gonna do it so I can get more light in there so you guys can see what's going on inside the, underneath the engine. But also it helps because the engine is gonna be even this way. All right, next we're gonna remove this uh, timing belt cover. Uh, this timing belt cover is held in by these two fasteners up top. And then these two guys on the bottom. There's the culprit. All right, next we're gonna remove our power steering pump belt, but believe it or not, on this engine, this power steering pump belt does not have a tensioner mechanism, or a tensioning mechanism, rather. I think according to the book, you're supposed to get a socket on the pulley, and then get a pry bar, and press the belt out as you're turning the pulley but we're gonna try to find a different way to take this belt off. All right, so it looks like this uh, back of the power steering pump is attached to the water pump on the bottom by that bolt and up top to this bracket by this. So what I'm gonna try to do is actually take that bolt out and loosen this and then we should be able to pivot this whole thing forward and be able to get this belt out. And this bottom one is gonna be a 12 millimeter. There we go. Next, I'm just gonna loosen this one. All right, you know what? There's actually another bolt underneath the power steering pump that bol bolts into the what looks like to be the water pump or the bracket for the water pump. And in order to get to that, it looks like we're gonna have to remove our this uh, passenger side headlight. And this guy is held in place, looks like by four bolts, two up top here, another one down there, and another one here on the back side. And then we just pop it on the side. Then it should come out. 
All right, next we'll do our connectors. This one. And here's the headlight one. This one's gonna be a little bit more stubborn. Oh, there's one more. There we go. Three in total. So you don't forget, keep all the bolts that you removed in order to remove the headlight with the headlight. All right, I give up. You really can't get to that bolt from underneath there, or at least I don't have the right uh, combination of sockets and adapters to get to it. So we're just gonna go the factory way. So you'll need a 3 8 Allen socket, and then you put that on a long ratchet, install it inside the power steering pump pulley. Next, as you're turning the power steering pump, you're supposed to use a pry bar and push this over this pulley, but you know, I'm gonna have to rent, rest this against this upper timing belt cover, which is probably gonna damage it, so. I'm actually gonna first try to push this over by hand, see how that goes. There, I got it. You gotta watch your fingers too. All right, looks like we just might be able to push this off, at least most of the way. Now we can try a pry bar or a screwdriver and get it off. Hopefully, the rest of the way. There we go. Putting this back on is gonna be fun. Also, if these belts are in good shape, they got no cracks or no tears, you wanna, and you're gonna reuse them, you wanna mark the rotation in which they're turning with a Sharpie or something, so you put them back on the same exact way. All right, so next I was gonna go ahead and start removing the timing belt covers and the timing belts and all the components, but in order to do that, we would have to remove this uh, mounting or motor mount, and if you remove that, we're gonna have to support the engine, put a jack or jack stand underneath this engine to support it before we can remove it. And that's gonna be in the way when we go to remove our exhaust manifold and maybe even our uh, intake manifold. So I'm actually gonna remove the exhaust manifold first then go on from there. So we're gonna first start with removing this shield. Uh, this is held in place by that one bolt that also attaches the bracket for oil dipstick tube and also that bolt. And these are gonna require a 12 millimeter socket. Now let's see if we can remove our oil dipstick tube. No, it's probably another bolt down lower that's holding it in place. But we're also gonna remove this bolt that we loosened earlier because this bolt is also attaching this power steering pump to this bracket, which is attached to our cylinder head. So we have to, to disconnect these two from each other. And this is also a 12 millimeter. All right, next we'll remove this connector for our O2 sensor. You just have to press down on this little tab on the side and pull out on this. Should come out without much fuss. All right, next, in order to remove the splash shield, uh, we're gonna have to loosen two more bolts down there. This is gonna, gonna be 10 millimeter, one you can see right there, and the other one right across. These might be easier for you to get from the bottom, but I have these guys, so I'm gonna get them from up top. You know, this second one, we might have to get from the bottom anyway. All right, guys, so now we're underneath the car. Here's a look at the bolts that we need to remove in order to remove this shield for our exhaust manifold. We will also remove these four, I'm sorry, these three uh, nuts that are holding our exhaust manifold to our exhaust pipe and also our oil dipstick tube down here. It doesn't look like it's secured in place by another bolt, so we're just gonna go up top and yank it out after we remove all these bolts. So there's this guy. And these guys are gonna be 14 millimeter. We're also gonna remove this connector for our downstream O2 sensor so that when you remove this manifold, this doesn't dangle off this wire and damage it, okay? Same process, just press down on this clip and pull this out. All right, back up top. I'm gonna to see if we can pull this uh, dip, old dipstick tube and hose out. There we go. We'll uh, try to fish out this uh, splash shield, see if that's possible. All right, looks like we need to remove this bracket altogether. All right, let's try it now. Yeah, there we go. I just fished through this connector, that's it. And then we're gonna keep all the nuts and bolts related to removing this thing with it. 
and we're gonna put it on the ground. Alrighty, so in order to remove this uh, exhaust manifold, looks like we need to remove four of these uh, bolts or nuts on top and then five on the bottom. There's one in that corner right there. And these are gonna be 10 millimeter as well. All right, now we're ready to pull this out of here. With just a note, some of these guys will come out with the stud and some of these nuts will come out just by themselves. So just keep track of them, put them back the same way. It's no big deal. All right, there are two more things holding this in place. We're gonna to need to get it from the bottom again. So here's a look at what we need to remove. There's gonna be one on the, this side. This is the passenger side. And for these, you're gonna need a uh, female torque socket, E12. 12 millimeter female torque socket. And here's another one on the driver's side. I'm gonna get this connector for O2 sensor out of the way. Might have to remove this bracket as well. You know, this is gonna come out, but in order to put this back in, I'm gonna remove this uh, cooling fan. All right, so next we're gonna go about removing our uh, valve cover. In order to do that, we need to detach this wiring harness and all the connectors that go to all the different sensors back here, then push that back, and also detach these connectors for our variable valve timing. Push those back, get it off the valve cover, then go ahead and remove these bolts around the circumference and the center of the valve cover, then we should be able to pull this off. Now, these connectors, some of them will come off pretty easy. You just press on a little tab and get them off. The other ones have a little safety clip. You'll need to push out first in order to get these uh, connectors off. And then after you push the safety tab out, you press down on that, and then you pull the connector out. We're also gonna remove this uh, coolant hose while we're at it. We just press it on the sides and pull up. We'll obviously need to replace this one as this is half broken anyway. So just gonna move down the line. And then we'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to get this uh, wiring harness detached from this uh, bracket back here. There you go, now we just pull up on this and this comes loose. Looks like we have a ground cable attached to the cylinder head through this wiring harness, so we're gonna remove that next. These are very important, make sure you put them back uh, when you go to put everything back together, okay? I'm just gonna put it back on the cylinder head so I don't forget. All right, next we'll switch over to this side of the uh, valve cover. Then we're gonna remove this connector. Again, pull up on, pull out on this safety tab, press down, pull. All right, this uh, wiring harness continues from here, it looks like. It goes down here to our uh, oil pressure sensor and also further down to our AC compressor clutch. So we're gonna have to disconnect those connectors and then uh, fish this through so we can get it out of here. Probably won't be able to get you guys a close shot, but you guys get the right idea. So there's that. All right, now we're just gonna fish these out and the AC compressor wire, yeah, you have to gonna, you're gonna have to get it from the bottom. All right, it looks like this wiring harness, there's another clamp down there that's holding in place. So we're gonna remove this uh, lower radiator hose which we'll have to do anyway in order to drain our coolant. Not that there is much coolant in this car, in this engine. But anyway, we're gonna loosen that clamp, pull that out, get set that aside, then get to that clamp that's holding this wiring harness in, and then get this out of here. All right, get your catch, man, ready. There we go. Now that we can get this uh, wiring harness out of here, this will be, we don't have to worry about working around it, you know, It'll be a lot easier, but it was a pain in the ass getting this out. All right, next we remove this connector for the other side of our variable valve timing. And then we pull up on this. And now we can see all the bolts that are holding this valve cover in. So we're gonna remove them, pull this valve cover off. These are gonna require an E10 female torque socket. All right, I think that's it. It was 11 in total. So now we're just gonna pull this guy off. There's actually a PCV hose that we need to remove back here. All right, here's a look at the PCV hose that's attached to this uh, valve cover. Looks like we just have to pull out this clamp and lock it in place here. Then we'll be able to just push this out. There we go. 
Now we should be able to get this out. All right, guys, so here's a close look at our cylinder head. We got some of that uh, coolant residue all over this, as expected. This is our exhaust camshaft. If you're wondering, this is our exhaust camshaft uh, sensor. There's another one for our intake sensor. These are going to be our uh, cylinder head bolts. Looks like there's five of them. This up here is our variable valve timing. There are two solenoids, it looks like, one for each uh, camshaft. All right, so the game plan from here is to go back there and see if we can remove that intake manifold from the cylinder head and the timing stuff then the cylinder head bolts and then yank this out. But we're gonna save that for episode two. And when that episode is ready, I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen that you can click on. There'll also be a link in the description box down below as well. And once again, if you found any tools or products used in this video that you found interesting, I'll put a link to them in the description box down below for you to check out. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.